Right, this is the one you've all been waiting for. Now, we all read the uh, Triumph pages on social media and the forums and all the rest of it. And check the internet out for advice, tips, how to do this, how to do that, what's this like, what's that like. And to be honest, I'm no different, but there's an awful lot of what I would call bullshit on there. So I'm going to run through my take on some of the things that some of the people say about my particular bike. Not my actual bike, I mean that particular model is really what I'm talking about. So the first one we'll hit is power. Now this is an early uh, 2017 900 Street Scrambler. So this is the one, the low power one as they call it. Now initially I was looking at a brand new 1200 Scrambler and then I started looking and I thought well hang on the uh, the 900s are sort of three four grand less and that was for the later model higher power 900 and then I looked a little bit deeper into it again and the early 900s if you can find a good one which I believe I did a half the price of a 1200 and they're certainly not half the bike so I thought right buy one of them sort it out get it sorted the way I want it so I've as you will have seen from my previous videos I've attacked this bike in numerous ways and the first one we'll talk about is because this one's known as the low power one I went and put myself a tech cam in now I've never had this bike on a rolling road, but according to tech, you're looking at around about 70 brake horsepower. Along with the few horsepower I'm gaining with my DCAT Vance and Hines exhaust, I'm probably somewhere in the low 70s. Was that worth doing? Well now, I'm going to say yes. And the reason I'm going to say yes is because I spent the money and the time and the effort doing it. I did do the job myself. It is actually a pretty easy job to do. And uh, does it make a difference? Well, if you rag the bike around, ride it like you stole it, yes, it probably does. Normal, everyday riding, bearing in mind that it's a relatively large capacity, low revving, torquey thing, I'm not sure you're going to notice the difference. But I'm going to put a tick against that one. That's, that's a good modification. So then another thing you read about is difficult to ride at low speeds, low revs. Uh, related to play in your throttle, because it's not a cable throttle, it's a, it's a ride-by-wire throttle on these not something that this one suffers with um, but the throttle spacers apparently cure that if I did have an issue with that I wouldn't hesitate to uh, to have a go at a set of them because they're incredibly inexpensive dead easy to fit and apparently it does cure it like I say this bike doesn't seem to suffer with that if you look at some of my previous videos you'll see me riding it very very slowly no problem, it doesn't lurch, jerk or play up at all. It's a really, really easy bike to ride at really, really low speeds. And that's without riding the clutch. So the next one after that, this one I believe to be a myth. Booster plug. Now, I had one and I fitted it and I couldn't tell the difference. And I just had a little bit of extra weight on it, a little bit of extra something. Uh, hanging around under my petrol tank and uh, I thought sod it so it's now lives on a shelf in the workshop if I have another one uh, another um, Triumph uh, another Triumph twin it might get fitted to that well, well we'll try it out it just seems to do absolutely nothing on this I don't know whether that's because I've done the cam uh, the exhaust I really don't know but that does nothing for me, so I didn't stick with it. 
Okay, next one. This one I just do not get. I've already mentioned, large-ish capacity, torquey, low revving engine, and the number of people who say, I keep looking for a sixth gear. You don't need a sixth gear, people. You've got a gear indicator on there, so you shouldn't be looking for anything past fifth. And because it's a big torquey engine, you get away with four gears, to be honest. So, I don't want a six gear. I don't want to be carrying the, the extra weight of an extra gear around. Six gear, that's the sort of thing you want on a high revving sports bike. Something that's got a narrowish power band and you've got to keep playing tunes on the gearbox to keep it within that power band. So even then, if you use it on the track or you ride it like you stole it permanently, yeah, I get that. But you don't need it on one of these bikes. Two-stroke, I get it on a two-stroke. You've got to keep a two-stroke singing to keep it moving. And I've owned many two-strokes over the years. A lot of them with six gears. Okay, right, this one's a hot potato. And I kind of agree with this one, but very, very much personal taste. Suspension. Now, I've messed with the suspension front and rear big time. And I've just about got it where I need it now. Now, uh, the front suspension, I've got the, the insert, the spring and cartridge kit. Uh, I think it was a Matrix one. But because I want to make this look like an old desert sled, I'm trying to get, to minimize the, the amount of modern stuff on it. So luckily, um, uh, I own or partly own an engineering company, so I have access to machining bits and pieces. And, uh, Although I did have the adjustment on the top here, I've got rid of that now because it just didn't look the part. And what I did was I found where I wanted it to be and then I machined new spacers in there to suit. An awful lot of messing about. I think it's worth doing, but unless you've got access to a fully equipped workshop like I have, I would say don't do the amount of messing that I've done. Now, some of the complaints on online say, oh, the suspension's too harsh. I need to soften it up. Be really careful about this because, again, it's personal taste, but I thought the suspension was actually a little bit wishy-washy, a little bit soft. So I wanted to stiffen it up. And that's what I've done. It's a little bit harder. It, how I like it, I like it a bit harder. I don't like it too squishy and too soft. Um, rear suspension, again, that was just luck. I happened to have a pair of units in the uh, suspension units in the workshop. I don't even remember what bike I bought them for. But they're about 30mm longer than Triumph Standard, which proper suited me. It gives me a little bit more clearance. Uh, I'm six foot tall, uh, just under 13 stone, which is 140-ish pounds, 80-ish kilos, something like that. It works well for me. So it's just a little bit taller. And a little bit um, harder, shall we say. That sounds terrible when you say it like that, but it's kind of set up how I like it now. Uh, right, another hot potato in more ways than one. This is one I absolutely do not get whatsoever brakes now this is the early one it's got Nissin brakes on it perfectly good brakes not a problem the first thing we'll, we'll touch on is uh, this is never going to get used off-road so that I'm not going to be buying the bracket to mount that up here if you use them off-road first of all you're a fool uh, but secondly it would be a good idea to move that round and have it on top because you're going to knock it and clout it down there. Same caliper, same disc and all the rest of it, you're just moving its position. Now, the thing is, people bang on about the Brembo's being better. I don't agree. And I think this stems from something that happened in the, in the noughties. I think it was about 2006, 2007. 
Nissin had a bad batch of calipers uh, whereby the piston, the plating on the piston was not up to standard. And they worked, but they were a bit sticky. They had very little feel. I don't know whether you've ever had it on a bike or even on your car where the, the rubber boot splits, the weather and the crap gets on the piston and uh, they still work, but they just feel a little bit wooden. Well, they came out of the factory like that. And that reputation seems to have stuck, particularly with Triumph owners. Uh, I think because it affected Triumph more, more than most other uh, manufacturers who were using a similar caliper. But it wasn't exclusively Triumph that the issue existed with. It was a bad batch that came out of the Nissin factory. Uh, that was sorted and they haven't had an issue since. I've had issues with brakes on cars and motorcycles where I normally I keep on top of that sort of thing but where I haven't kept on top of it and uh, I've had a sticky shitty brake but if I turn the ABS off uh, an option which you have on the scrambler I can with two fingers on the front brake I can lock that front wheel well, I can lock the front wheel with the Brembo's that are on my CCM as well. I don't see a difference. In good condition, her brakes are brake. Nissin and Brembo are both decent quality brakes. There you go, Brembo brakes on the CCM, front and rear. And they work a treat, just like the Nissins on my Triumph work a treat. Another one that I keep reading from time to time on the internet tyres. Now they're the original Metzler Torrance tyres on this. They're bloody wearing well and as you can see no chicken strips. Nothing wrong with those tyres. I guess if you were going to use it off-road you may well want to put something a bit more aggressive on and slightly more aggressive like um, Michelin Anarchies things like that actually do give a better look and that may well be the direction I'll go when I wear these out but I'm not going to throw them away just because they don't look right they certainly work well they stick in the dry they stick in the wet I have no complaints with those tires whatsoever oh what else do we have seat now I don't carry pillion passengers so the pillion pad has actually never been fitted to this bike. I've got it, but it's never been fitted. I think I said earlier on, I'm six foot tall. Um, just under 13 stone, 140-ish pounds, 80 odd kilos. That seat is long enough and comfortable enough for me to stay in it for the range of my tank, which is about 120 miles, 130 miles, something like that. Not something I do very often, but I do ride to the Welsh coast from time to time, uh, which from my house is around about 70 miles, and uh, I have no arse issues. I can do it in one hit, although I quite often do stop for a coffee. Oh, actually, I'll just pop back to the engine briefly. One thing that they were a bit known for, the early ones, the early uh, 900s, dodgy plug caps. I've done the upgrade on them, it spluttered and coughed a bit and actually thinking back to the booster plugs and throttle spacers I wonder if that might be the issue. So if you do have an issue there, try upgrading your, your uh, plug caps first before you start ripping the bike apart and messing with other things. Okie doke, lights, there's another one. Now I've done a bit of a backwards bet step here for um, for the sake of cosmetics but my front light's standard and I think it's fine it works for a single headlamp it works quite well I don't ride the bike that often in the dark but it works a damn sight better than the headlight on that thing does on a windy day the beam on the CCM can get blown to one side terrible lights but I've got to go with the look so I just don't ride that in the dark. Um, rear light, well, 
not only have I got the uh, the Motone tail tidy, but I've also done my own tail tuck so that the lights flush with the back of the bike. That is not the brightest of lights, but this was a, th a modification that the previous owner did. We've got an additional light, which is tail light and brake light, fitted up there. That's a cheap Chinese eBay special, probably a fiver. I don't even know. Like I say, I didn't fit that. That just uh, adds a bit more light to the back. Helps me to be seen from the back. So, what else? There's a lot of people talk about bling and, and uh, adding things. Now, to me, it's a naked bike. I don't want screens and things on it. Uh, it I questioned putting this number plate on, but it looked retro enough. And it, it hid the... The speedo is a bit of an ugly-looking speedo, so it hid that from the front. Uh, but, of course, I can still see it, so that's why I did that. Um, indicators. That is going to be a work in progress for a long, long time. I I'm, I'm keep messing and changing them, but I keep going back to the originals because the originals light up well uh, and... Although they're a little bit big, I think I've managed to tuck them in. So, uh, indicators is one of those work in progress things that's going to continue to happen for a little while longer. What else have I got to say? Well, I haven't really. Oh, I suppose that's worth a mention. Another question that pops up on the internet from time to time is paddock stands. Well, I actually do have a paddock stand which I use for the CCM occasionally, but the uh, you know, old motorcycle scissor jack works a treat, I can get it jacked up, chain, tyres, cleaning, whatever, it's handy, when it's folded down it doesn't take up much space, I mean you could bolt it to the floor, I don't, because I move it around. but. Uh, yeah, they're, they're quite worthy uh, of a couple of quid. I can't remember how much that did cost, but it was off eBay, and it'll work on any bike, as long as you can... It does come with little extensions as well, actually. Um, so if you can't get it flat, like I can on the bottom of this, and I can on the bottom of the CCM, little, little extensions that come off here, and we'll go around frame tubes to jack it up. So uh, they came with it. So uh, I had a Tiger, 955 Tiger before this, which has the exhaust passing under the engine and gearbox. Uh, I had to use those extensions to jack that up, but it worked. So there you are. Next video is probably going to be early next week, because this weekend, it is the first annual Shropshire Triumph Owners Motorcycle Club uh, rally. Let's get Tiddly rally. Weather's going to be great, apparently. Uh, live music, mucking about. We'll probably have a ride out or two. And uh, a beer or two. Uh, if you're coming along to that, look out for this. Look out for either of these two bikes. I should really go on the Triumph because it's a Triumph do. But I might go on the CCM as well, just to give it a run. So look out for either of these two bikes. And uh, come and say hello. So uh, I shall see you all again very, very soon. Thank you very much.